All right. So presenting today for the Florida School Counselor Association Lunch and Learn webinar is Mrs. Grace Wilhelm, a school counselor with more than 20 years of experience at both the elementary and middle school levels. She's presented for FISCA, ASCA, and at international schools overseas. Her presentations include play therapy, disaggregated data, ramp, and stress management. She has been the Duval County School Counselor of the Year and was previously selected as an ASCA School Counselor of the Year semifinalist. In January of 2022, Grace will represent Florida and Washington, D.C. as the 2021 Florida School Counselor of the Year. Grace is a National Board Certified Counselor. She's received RAMP twice and the FDOE PTSA Parent Involvement Award. Her published works include Games and Play to Enhance Counseling and Teaching Strategies, Anger and Me, and Stress Busting. We are eager to hear about your use of games and how you teach self-care. So thank you for joining us today, Grace. You now have the floor. Hi, thank you, Jeannie. And thank you, everybody. It's, it's good to be here this afternoon and um, um, talk to you about some of the things that I do for stress management and teaching children stress management using games. Okay, so um, one of the first things that I do is take a pretest, and this is just a simple pretest. I use perception surveys, that's for everybody, so I don't have to get permission to use those surveys because everybody takes a perception survey. So when I go into the classroom, one of the first things that I might do for before we start stress management is to take a simple survey and it might look like this. I'll just ask everybody to take out a sheet of paper. They're gonna write their name on it and list one through 10 and they're going to cut the paper in half. They're gonna put their name on both pages and just list one through 10. Then I'm going to ask them, write down all the ways that you can relieve stress. What do you know about stress? What can you do to get rid of stress? And most of the time I find that students will only be able to list about three things that they do to relieve stress, to get rid of stress, to take care of themselves. And I've done this with elementary students in grades four to five, middle school students, and um, all the way up through adults where I've gone into some businesses and have taught stress management. And you can also do the same, you can get your side hustle on. So we get this little pretest. I'm gonna collect both pages, this one and um, the, the blank one, one that I asked them to write down ways to release stress. All right, so you've all probably seen this stress ball. You toss it around the room and where your thumb lands, that's um, something you're going to discuss or talk about. And this ball can cost about $22 to get, this one needs to be inflated a little bit. But instead of using something like this ball that you might just toss around for 10 minutes in the class, I'm gonna show you some other ways without using paper. I call it a paperless small group and how to teach children, adults, ed your ed administrators, faculty and staff, stress management with using games. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna show you is a two minute interview. So this is something that I also do before I start my stress management class or my small group or individual counseling. This is called the stress test. And the stress test, I'm going to give this card to the students and it just lists some different things that are stressors in people's lives. And I'll give the students a permanent marker and I'll have them underline everything that is a stressor in their life without telling them anything about boundaries or anything you know counseling related like that. So I'll give this to a, adults or children and I'll say, just underline everything that's yours. It's permanent because they can't erase it. So then I can go back and I, I can look because there's some sensitive things on here, like a family going through a divorce or arguments at home, um, somebody that might be in jail. Uh, they might, kids might hear their parents talking about mortgage or foreclosure. Some of these terms are familiar with, some not, but I'll have them underline and then put their score here. Later on in an individual counseling session, I'll take this card and 
talk about boundaries. What is their stress and what is their parent's stress? And we will take out the points that are not their stress that belongs to somebody else. We'll um, rescore ourselves because then on the back, I have ways to relieve stress, but way over here on the right-hand side, it talks about a score that is um, normal because there are, we can, everybody has stress. Stress is just a normal part of life and your stress can be normal. You can have normal levels of stress. Stress is what, what allows us to function, to get up and brush our teeth, to put on deodorant, to you know, take care of ourselves naturally. And naturally, when we're taking care of stress, we automatically do some of these things every day. So some of these things are like read a book, watch a movie, go to the gym, sweat, paint your, paint your fingernails, talk to a friend, crochet, learn something new, start a jogging program. Some, some of these things we naturally do every day to take care of ourselves. But when we are in a position where stress has taken over our life or we become depressed because of the stress or the stress is robbing us of a quality of life, we have to force ourselves to do some of these things to take care of ourselves. When we get in that position where we have too many stress points, then we have to uh, force ourselves to change or we need help to change. That's where a counselor or a friend comes in to help us to make those changes to relieve the stress that we're feeling. So this is just a little card that I made. And a lot of you have some ideas or ways to show people how to do things. And you can get those, you know, printed up so your students or your community can have access to them and, and you can do more with them. Okay. So some of the things that I do in stress, I talk about the causes, the symptoms, and ways to relieve stress. So I put them in a little booklet. So whatever I have in Word, or I just put them in a little booklet that goes over the little stress test for causes, for symptoms and relief, relief of stress, how to add up your stress points when you look at all the things that cause stress. Then we're gonna talk about the symptoms of stress. And this is just an overview of what to talk about in a group for stress or when you're talking with individuals or if you're doing this in a, in a whole class. And this little booklet is available for you too. So I will give it to Jeannie so that anybody that wants access to this little booklet can have it. So um, after this part, we're gonna talk about the symptoms of stress like, what do you feel? Is this giving you a stomach ache? Is it giving you inability to sleep? Are you waking up in the middle of the night? Are you not able to fall asleep at, at, um, when it's time to go to bed? Are you waking up and you can't go back to sleep? Do you have nervous feelings? Do you feel something in the palms of your hands? Do you have stomach aches, headaches, um, sometimes a, nause a nauseous feeling? Do you feel like you just want to eat all the time or do you get the opposite feeling where you lose your appetite? So some of these things like that, that I've given to students when their symptoms are too high, they will even take this little booklet. I'll recommend to the parents to just take it, show it to your pediatrician, all these things that the child is feeling and um, just go over it because it, this might even be some of them symptoms of other things going on with the child that need to be checked. So then we'll go over uh, some more, the signs of stress, and I will have them just underline the signs that they're feeling. We'll talk about physical, emotional, behavioral, and intellectual stress. And that is important because the way to relieve stress is to do something opposite. And then we'll talk about the stress snappers, way to bust stress, way to snap out of stress. And these self-assessments have little places where they can learn. So this little booklet was just made as eight pages and halfway like this. And then there's a note on the back to the parents. Okay, and in, in fifth grade, I will also go over stress and food. I go over this with middle school and with adults. And there's lots of chemicals that affect our brain. And so we'll go over this. So this is just a little review of stress management 
101, you know, because we could talk, you know, for months on stress and all the things that stress uh, causes and what stress does. At the end, this is a little quiz on stress. And in the back is a note to parents and um, stressors of teens or stressors of children. So this is one way that I make a booklet. This is just run off the copy machine. Another way that I make a booklet on stress is to run it off on the copy machine, but this cover is tag board, a little bit stiffer, and it's um, the same. This booklet has more pages in it, and it has some other different self-assessments in it. Oh, this is another example in, for anger, anger at management, anger in me. And then if I want to get really fancy, I'll take my PDF and spread it out with um, questions and lines for them to answer. And I'll put it in a little booklet, a paperback. So if I'm going to a business or something like that, they have um, a little booklet now that they can use. And I have those in several different booklets that I've made as paperbacks and available for, for the adults and, and people that I, I work with. And sometimes kids enjoy getting a, a paperback book. All right, so let's go, we're gonna go into this game. All right, so I'm, first I'm going to go into one of the games that I use, and then I'm going to talk about how I set up the game. So one game that I like to use in um, one of my sessions on stress management is Don't Break the Ice. This is a Hasbro game. It comes with two hammers. It comes with um, this little bear that's skating on the ice. And when I'm talking with the students or my population, I will say, tell me, what is stressing you out? So some of them, some, they might say, um, there's a lot of arguments at home. So I'll say, here, take the hammer and tell me about that. So they're going to say arguments at home and they'll punch out an ice cube. See, Bob here, he's skating on thin ice. What does that mean? So we can talk about what skating on thin ice feels like, you know, getting in trouble, not feeling good. And if something's happening at home, like arguments at home, that's gonna cause a hole in your ice. And we're gonna talk about that and process through that. So it's just not playing a game, like don't break the ice, where we could actually play this whole game in two minutes. When we process through this game with our counseling strategies and counseling skills, this game is gonna take us about 20 minutes to play. But for sake of time, I'm just gonna go through the game and how I play it with students. And, um, and, then, and then of course, go on to the next game. So what else, what else is bothering you? My parents, um, they, there's a lot of screaming and yelling and arguments and they're talking about getting a divorce. So let's pop out one there. So give them the hammer, pop out one. Now we have some more holes in our ice. We're gonna slip through the cracks. We're gonna fall through the cracks. And what might that feel like? What does it feel like? And um, my brother, is sick and he has been in the hospital and um, I, I think he's coming home tomorrow. He's been in there for over a week, he's coming home tomorrow. So family member in the hospital. My, my grandmother died two months ago. Oops, sometimes they just fall through for no reason. My grandmother just got out of the hospital or my grandmother died two months ago. So death in the family. And so we're gonna talk about that. And as we're talking about the stress that is in a person's life, we are going to talk about how does that feel? What do you feel? Headaches, stomach aches, um, losing your appetite, someone crying, maybe you're crying, not feeling well. What is the stress doing to you? We're going to talk about those symptoms that the that the person or the, the kids might be feeling at that time. Then we're gonna, so what would happen if Bob fell through, if he fell through the ice? And some students might say you'll die, but you know, that would be terrible if you died from circumstances that were happening around you. But most of the time, you're not gonna fall in. You're not going to die. You're not going to freeze to death. You're, um, we can do things to, 
help us relieve stress. And so that I put this in the game like this. So let's look at, look at this, ICE, I-C-E. I-C-E stands for in case of an emergency. And we can take these ice cubes right now and we can look inside of them and see ways to relieve stress. So in these ice cubes, I have planted ways to relieve stress. So we're gonna open them up and the students are going to get excited about what's in those ice cubes. This one says, make a collage. And we'll sit here, you know, for a good time and just talk about ways that we can relieve stress. And this one says, talk to a friend. So do you have a friend that you could talk to? Maybe you could talk to your neighbor or you could talk to your parents. Maybe you could talk to a teacher. And look, right now you're talking to me. You're visiting with a counselor. Give a compliment to somebody. And I'll just open one more. So this one does say talk with a friend. Okay, so all of these ice cubes, before I started working with students or my group, I planted with ways to relieve stress inside the bottom of the game. So this, this game, so this is just a little sidebar right here. So I use this game for stress management. I use this game for studying organizational skills. So, you know, Miss Jones sent me to you to talk with you about my grades. So we're gonna talk about their grades. What are the, what's causing you to fail? Talk about things that you're doing that you should not be doing, things that you're not doing that you should be doing and um, talk about how that feels and ways that we can prevent it. And um, when we get to this part, in case of an emergency, what can we do? Well, we can make flashcards. We can take notes in class when the teacher's talking. We can do all our homework, not most of our homework. We can clean out our backpack, clean out our locker. We can get a, a friend to quiz us. So I actually have this game, this one set up the, as color coded. So the blue and yellow papers stand for ways to relieve stress. And the orange and green ones are actually for study skills. So if I have this game set up in my room, sitting on my desk and students come into my room and they have to talk with me about grades or, or stress or things that are bothering them, I know that if it's stress related, I'm only going to open up the ones that are blue and yellow. And if it's for study skills, I'm going to open up the ones that are green and, and orange. So that's just a little note there. So how to set up this game. Here's some more little tips on setting up the games. So in the little, in the little booklet that I showed you, there are um, probably 40 different ways to relieve stress. So I'm gonna take these, take construction paper, or this is uh, a little uh, paper, that a, a type of cardstock that's a little bit stiffer. And I cut it into squares that are four inches by four inches. And I'm going to, these are gonna be colorful. So all of these are related to stress in this, in this pile right here. And they will say something like, do something to have fun, make a schedule, pamper yourself, like get a massage, paint your fingernails, learn something new, get a hug, give a hug, make a plan to solve your problems, have a cup of tea, rollerblade, sweat, jog, run, paint a picture, start a journal, talk to your parents, call someone, make a list of positive things about yourself, write a thank you note, do something nice for someone. Clean out your closet. Take a bubble bath. Write a poem. Read a poem. Visit your counselor. Join a club at school. Read a book. Dance to your favorite music. Go for a walk. Go bike riding. Play basketball. Exercise every day, 
take vitamins, eat fruits and veggies every day. So there's just some things. So on my desk, I always have a stash of construction paper cards that are cut four inches by four inches. These are blank. Sometimes I'll have students write their own ways to manage stress on the on this card. And um, you know, I'll do I'll also set up this game for anger control, um, study skills, making friends, some different things like that. So for this this webinar, just on stress management. So this color is for study skills. Here's another pile of cards that I have just on stress and they're all green. So when I set up this game, I know that all these green ones will be for stress management. Okay, so that will just give you some ideas on that. Then we're gonna take these four by four little papers and we're gonna fold them in half, and crease it and fold it in half again and crease it and again and one more time. So it's folded into this little tiny square and that is what that is what's gonna fit inside the ice cube snugly so it won't pop out. So when the game is set up, they'll all be in there and you might have all of yours for stress management, ways to relieve stress in that game. Okay, so there's one for stress management. And again, we're just gonna fold it and crease it. This can be with construction paper or it can be with this cardstock paper. And we get it into this little square and it tucks into the ice cube and it doesn't, it doesn't fall out. Okay, so that's how to set up that game right there and how to use it for a lot of different purposes in your room. And I have a table where sometimes it's just on the table and if someone starts talking about a problem and I know that those strategies are in the game, we'll just start using it. And who doesn't like to use a hammer to knock out your stuff? quite your stress. Okay, here's a simple one with a balloon. You can get a child that's angry or stressed out, just give them a balloon. And what is what is bothering you? What is stressing you out? Okay, Jonathan, he keeps making fun of my clothes. David won't play with me on the playground. Miss Jones keeps harassing me about my homework. Every time I go into the class, I never get it all done, but at least I'm getting most of it done. If she calls my mom one more time, I'm just gonna pop. Take all that stress, anger, tie it up. Okay, sometimes kids don't wanna come and talk to you, but that's okay. Because this, this balloon can represent everything that's inside of kids that makes them want to pop. But what does a counselor do? Some kids think this is the counselor coming in to just get them. But that's not what the counselor does. You have all this stuff inside of you. So the counselor works like this. We're just going to go inside your head. We're going to get in there a little bit and work on your problems. And when I come out and you go back to class, it's gonna be like nothing ever happened. Nobody will even know that you were here. But let's say you come back. You come back and we talk about your problems, but this time oops, we're gonna work through your problems. Let me come right through the other side. We're gonna work through your problems. I'm gonna get in there. We're gonna talk about them. We're gonna talk about ways to solve the problems. And then you're gonna go back to class again. Nobody's even gonna know that you were here. That's the counselor relationship. We're gonna talk about our problems and work about, work about them and solve them and nobody's even gonna know. Yeah. 
we're going to go on to the next one, which is the Kerplunk game. Okay, here is Kerplunk. Yeah. Kerplunk looks like this. We're going to set it up. And I took all of these straws. Can you see? Okay. I put all of these straws, or like kind of like pick up sticks. Yes. Wait, let me interrupt you. Would you please turn your uh, camera on your computer down? We're not able to see the one from the uh, camera on the phone. Thank you. Okay. All right. So this is Kerplunk. I already put the straws in here. These straws are going to represent things that you can do to get rid of stress. And then Kerplunk also comes with these marbles. So these marbles are going to represent your stress points. Your causing you to be stressed out. These are all your stress points. And we have to get rid of our stress points. So I'm gonna put all the stress in here. And you can talk about them as you're putting them in here. What's, what is stressing you out? Oh, there's the neighbors across the street and their dog just keeps bothering our dog. You know, like too much homework, I can't keep up with it. There's a science project and there's too many steps and we're supposed to be on step seven, I'm still on step one. My mom can't buy me any poster board. My dad lost his job. Our tire had a, uh, our car had a flat tire. I get too late to school because we keep having car problems and the teacher won't help me with that. She just doesn't want to hear about anything I'm going to say to her. All right. So we have all these stress points up here. And now we have these sticks that are going to represent the things that we can do to get rid of stress. Okay, what can we do to, to get rid of stress? Well, we could um, wake up a little bit earlier to try to get to school on time. We can, to relax at home, we can read a book. To relax at home, I could watch a movie. To help myself at home, I could write a thank you note to somebody. I could write a note just to show somebody appreciation. I could have a cup of hot tea. I could take a bubble bath. Oops, we haven't lost any stress points yet. Because some, some of these things, it's um, not, you know, you just don't do them one time. Just on Thursday or Friday, sometimes we have to think of things to do every day. So I might bake some cookies. I might play a video game. I might talk to my neighbor. I might spend some time. I might go outside and play some basketball, throw some hoops out in the driveway. I might, um, instead of just going for a walk, going for a jog and really starting to sweat because it's important for kids to get out there and sweat. And um, I might go rollerblading when I get home because I haven't done that in a while. I might ride my bike. I might call a friend and ask them to ride a bike with me. I might go get the mail and sort it out for my parents. So you can think of some ways that you could solve um, stress, lots of different ways to get those stress points off. So look how far we are. We've got one stress point there. And then again, this makes for a lot of repetition when we're talking with the you know, the kids about, about stress. And again, as another little sidebar, you can use this for lots of different things. This could be for ways to make friends. And the marbles are your friends and the sticks are ways to make friends. This could be um, ways to get good grades. The marbles are the points that you need to make an A and the sticks are the things that you can do to bring your grades up. So they can be used for, this game can be used for lots of different things that you're trying to get across with the child to make it hands-on, to make it auditory, to make it visual. And they're not having to write anything down on paper. It's all discussion and helping them.
to figure out what they need to do to relieve some of that stress that they're feeling. Okay. As a way to review, I like to use barrel monkeys. So they come in all different kinds of colors and shapes and um, they come in different sizes. So this is giant barrel of monkeys and they can be strung together like this. So I'll do this in, in two ways. I will um, get the monkeys and just allow them to string up the monkeys like this instead of playing the game. And every time they name a way to relieve stress, they can just keep adding them. And the goal is to use up all the monkeys. And sometimes there's 10 to 15 monkeys in a barrel, depending on which kind of monkeys that you get. This barrel has 12 in it. So if we're going to play the game where they're going to string a monkey up, they're going to grab a monkey, they're going to tell me a way to relieve stress and then grab a monkey. Okay, like that. And a way that I make this game a little bit easier for kids to pick up and have review is I'll take these monkeys. I don't know what camera we're using right now. This one. Okay, I'll take these little monkeys and I'll bend their arms like that. So they are not lying flat on the table. So with their arms bent a little bit, it's just easier for them to pick up the next monkey. When they come and they're brand new, they kind of just lie flat on the table. It's a little bit harder, but just take each monkey and bend their arms and that will make them not lie flat and they'll just be a lot easier to pick up and have your review game with them. Um, with barrel of monkeys. And this is good for reviewing a lot of things. And barrel of monkeys does not cost very much at all. In fact, you can even get them at the dollar store. This was um, dollar store dinosaurs in a can. And it just bent them like that. So it came like with 10 or 12 of these dinosaurs in there. And they have all different kinds of animals and play the same way. So this can be done in, um, when you're having a whole classroom discussion and each group can have a barrel of monkeys and students can take turns and help each other name ways to relieve stress and string them all to string them all together and other review can be you know ways to bring up your grades or ways to make friends or whatever thing you're whatever concepts or strategies you're working on cuz you want them to be able to remember those and call them out um, in their heads as, as many times. So it's not going to do them any good to talk about it in class. And when they go home, they can't remember what they're supposed to do. So this just helps them to review and to um, repeat these lists over and over using Kerplunk and Don't Break the Ice and Barrel of Monkeys. Okay. And then I'm gonna do this one right here. This is Barkin Bruno. And he, you know, we all have, even us as educators, um, counselors, we, people who do a lot of things are expected to do more things. So they know that we're really good with our time. We know how to manage our time. We know how to get things done. We have resources. So people want to keep bothering our bones. So our bones is like our time. So I want you to help with National Honor Society. I want you to help this, this kid with um, a problem about his grades. I want you to talk to these two students who are you know, having trouble on the playground, who are picking on each other. I want, you might have like some assignments that you have due. Students have a lot of si assignments due. They have a project coming up for social studies. They have a science project coming up. They have homework that they have to keep up with on a daily basis. They have a friend that's bothering them. Their bus comes really early in the morning. They have to be able to get on the bus. They can't be late for school. So lots of things. So we're gonna talk about, talk about their bones. And it's important to take care of your bones because when we get the projects done, we get the science project done, that's like relieving getting rid of that bone, when we get the, um, have the confrontational talk that we needed to have with somebody, get rid of those bones. 
but sometimes people want to add things on your plate because things are coming off your plate. People want to add more things on your plate. Self-care is really important because if you don't have your self-care, you're going to get grouchy. You're going to start complaining. You're not going to be yourself. So it's going to be really important to have self-care and take care of yourself. And sometimes it's even important to say, no, I'm sorry, I won't be able to do that because we don't want the grouchiness to come out. That's right. You'll be really grouchy and snap at somebody and that's not going to look good. So it's important for our kids to learn self-care so they're not going to be grouchy and attack somebody and um, have a problem. Take care of yourself first before the problem comes. And in the end, it's like this. We're all like this caterpillar. We want to make some changes. So we have to take care of ourselves and get alone time, read a book, get into our cocoon, watch a movie, spend some time with our families and people that we love, just wrap ourselves up in there with a hot cup of tea or with some friends at a restaurant, eating dinner, just taking some time to relax, get in our little cocoon. And when we make those changes in our lives to, to do the things that we want to do, so we know like what's important, then we're just going to develop into this nice, butterfly that will come out will be a person that just makes some changes and we'll just have a, a happier life just like this like being a butterfly we have to make those changes and it just starts with just making those changes not just one change uh, a week but every day we have to do like two little things to take care of ourselves okay so so Jeannie I'm going to bring it back to you now Awesome. Thank you so much, Grace. Those are some terrific ideas. So um, if there are questions from our viewers, if you would please put those in the chat, we will be happy to answer any questions you have for Grace. Um, as a reminder, if you did not get the earlier uh, announcement, please put your first and last name, your district, and your uh, level in the chat. Grace, we have a question. Where did you get the butterfly and where did you get Bruno? The butterfly, it, I found on the internet. So um, I think there's a story about the butterfly in um, student success skills for students. And, um, but the, the butterfly was um, on the internet under puppets. And Bruno is called Barking Bruno. And where did you find him? He was also, I found him at like, um, like a store like Big Lots, like a liquidator store. And um, I've also seen him on the internet. So I looked for him the other day, I couldn't, I couldn't find him. So I couldn't find him on Amazon. So he might be out there someplace else. I'm not sure but he's called Barking Bruno. Okay, um, and then it, a couple of people are asking about the book for stress. Um, if you'll just email that to me when we post the recording of today's mm -hmm. session, we will also attach that at the bottom of the recording. Give us a couple of days to get that um, downloaded and up on the, YouTube, the Florida School Counselor Association YouTube website. Um, Yes. Someone and that asked be, about a list of games you use today. If you could um, maybe put that in a list for us too, and we'll attach that to the webinar as well. Um, okay. Any other questions that you have for Grace? Go ahead and put those in the chat. We wanna thank you, Grace, for sharing with us today. A lot of great ideas. Um, I'm really curious how you did the balloon trick. That was pretty awesome. Um, and did I see the balloon going down with air? It did, did lose a little bit of air there. Which is good because if you see your school counselor, you should start having some stress relief too. So um, yeah, I like that. Yeah. So that's just the operation of like rubber molecules. So this is a wooden skewer. So I don't know what camera we're using. So you blow up the balloon and this is like, um, a good latex balloon, 
or, you know, it has a, you know, that can blow up really big, but I blow it up small. So this is, I mean, this balloon could, could blow up twice as big as, as it is right here. And see right here, there's a lot of, you know, like what I'll call rubber right here. You can tell by the change in the color. Can you see it? What camera are we using? You're good facing us. Okay, right there. And on the other side, there is some more where you're gonna see it right here, where it's a darker color. You can see mm -hmm. like, which is like more rubber. So in science, this is the same principle as arthroscopic surgery because they will take the point or the, you know, the needle and put it in an area where you have a lot of skin. So when it goes in and it comes out, it just plugs up by itself. Rubber molecules are very big, so that's how that's gonna work. So what you're gonna do is just take this and you're just gonna poke it in to the balloon right there. And because, um, you know, I'm inside your head now working around and they see it in there and they know I made a hole in the balloon and it didn't pop. And when I take it out, it's going to, it's, it's not gonna have any air. And I can give the balloon to them too. And they're gonna see like nothing happens to it. It closes up by itself. And then if I go back in and I can come back in. Now, the next time you come to me, we're gonna work through your problems. So, whoops, all the way, <laughs> go all the way through. And you wanna hit that spot that has the most rubber on the other end in that color and it will come all the way, it'll come all the way through and then you can actually just pull it out. And because it has so much of, you know, rubber or color around there, it'll close up all by itself. Thanks for sharing your secrets with us, Grace. All right, if you don't have any, if anyone doesn't have any more questions, um, we'll close out for today. People did ask about the recording. It will be on the Florida School Counselor Association website. You can go to professional development and then go to our YouTube channel. Um, when we post that, Grace will also be sending me the list of games and the stress booklet, and we will post that with the video as well. If no one else has any questions, we just wanna thank you very much, Grace, on behalf of the Florida School Counselor Association for presenting to us today for our first webinar, Lunch and Learn. Um, and we wanna thank all of you participants for joining us today. So have a great day, everyone. Thank you, Grace. All right, thank you, you're welcome. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right.